Good day everyone! My name is Teacher Claire. Welcome to Roblox Learning Tutorial. If you're interested to learn how to do coding and analyze your data, then this session is for you. The objective for this session is to demonstrate skills on how to conduct a qualitative data analysis. Today, we will discuss the meaning of coding, cover the pattern characteristics, then we do the coding process, the qualitative data analysis, and finally, briefly discuss the crafting of your research paper. For better understanding, a code is simply a qualitative inquiry, which is most often a word or short phrase that captures your point of interest so when we do coding you are actually assigning or capturing a salient attribute or characteristics to serve as your data once you do coding you must look for patterns similarities or differences of the transcribed information it is usually done repeatedly until patterns arises and subsequently categorizing them based on relevance to eventually arrive to specific theme. Simply put, qualitative data analysis requires a systematic coding of interview transcripts, field notes, observation notes, and other textual materials to increase the understanding of a phenomenon. If you will ask me, how do we recognize patterns? So after transcribing, we do coding. However, we must take note for patterns during the coding process. In simple terms, a pattern can be characterized by looking for its similarity, meaning you scrutinize for the things that happens the same way, how the data collected differ, as well as how the frequency of data that surfaced across participants. Finally, you may also look for those events or behaviors that happened to cause another to appear. If this is the flow on how rumors spread in a normal setting, then for us to gather all information, not just bits of information, we need to capture all details until we reached that saturation point. In other words, in qualitative data, we must continue adding the number of subjects or participants. When we gather information and no new information is added, then we can say that we reach its saturation point and that's the time we stop gathering information in gathering information we must always ask in reference to the objectives of our study here are some guide questions that you may consider as you do the coding what surprised intrigued or disturbed you how do I make my analytical memos Take note that analytical memos are merely the researcher's personal reflections as he or she does the coding. Lastly, if you will ask, how will you process your coding more efficiently? To answer that, we simply take note of the following. We need to understand that the flow of coding process is simply from real or particular events to abstract or general. During the first cycle of coding, we must do the descriptive coding, the most common coding, emotion coding, narrative coding, or process coding. Just like in our previous video on the use of Quirkos software, I did two types of coding, the descriptive coding, and the emotion coding. In that video, my first step was to highlight specific texts or phrases and dragging those texts, phrases to their appropriate balloons. Next, we sort the codes and categorize them based on the 
relationship between code frequencies. After which, we need to synthesize then reach to theoretical coding that will involve the readings of RRL or related literature. This is the main reason why I included journal publication in QueerCost software. To deepen your understanding on how to do qualitative data analysis, allow me to illustrate it in this manner. After transcribing, we do immediately the coding process. Then we sort them. Identify the specific category it belongs. Finally, we identify the theme. Take note that a theme must be an outcome of coding, categorization, and analytic reflections, and not something that is in itself coded. In my previous video on queer cause, I simply do the grouping based on the SOPs of the study then do the coding. According to Saldanya, 2016, after gathering the data, we do the coding, then categorize them. For instance, in my previous video, I categorized the lived experiences of pregnant women based on their emotional responses and behavioral responses. Once we're done with categorization, we then group them into themes, and finally, we formulate our theory. For Costa, 2019, he made a comprehensive qualitative data analysis. Accordingly, it must start from the proper utilization of data tools, such as the interview transcript, field notes, audio recordings, and other documents. And on second phase, a qualitative researcher must do the data familiarization before doing his or her initial coding stage, the sorting, and finally, the theming, which is the third coding stage. Once we complete these stages, that's the right time we do the presentation of our findings which will involve the following, transcribing the participants' profiles, how do we do the coding to arrive into themes, then explaining the meaning of our themes. Before I end my presentation, allow me to present this suggested research timeline. If you plan to undergo a simple qualitative study, then for day one, we must first finalize your research title and statement of the problem. On day two, we must finalize your target subjects and give them letter of permission or asking consent for their voluntary participation. Likewise, consent to record or take photo for documentation purposes. We must explain to the participants that all information collected will be treated with utmost confidentiality. Once they agree, we determine the appropriate place and time where to conduct the FGD or interview. On day 3, we do the gathering and transcribing of your data, after which, you will then use QueerCause software for your data analysis. Have your research findings and finally do your research paper which will be in this order. Introduction, research objectives, theoretical conceptual framework, your methodology, results and discussion, conclusions, recommendations, and finally your documentations. So let's familiarize what we have learned from this session. First, we discuss the different meanings of coding. We also learned how to identify the patterns, understand the coding process based from Saldinia, 
2016 and Acosta 2019. Finally, we ended in discussing a qualitative research writing timeline. So that's all for our part 1 lesson on qualitative data analysis. If you want to download this presentation, simply click the link in this video description. After your submission, applicable link will be automatically given. So thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Once again, this is Teacher Claire.